Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. No, this is a um, dream come true. You know, I think that uh, walking around as a student athlete or a prospective student athlete here, um, you know, some of the reasons, actually the main reason that I chose the Ohio State University is because I felt like I could do anything here. You know, that, that was my sentiment coming here as a student athlete. And so to come full circle uh, and feel like I wanted to be in this profession and now be able to, to, to do it here, it, it really just solidifies that, that, uh, that first thought, my first time on campus, that this is a place where you can do uh, anything. And so th this is really a dream come true uh, in terms of you know, uh, me coming back to my second home. You know, we'll open it up for questions. And if you would, state your name and your identification just so we're all going to get a chance to start to know uh, who's going to be, who she's going to be here. <laughs> That's a first one. Hi, Rockland. Working with, building relationships with. And Whitney Harding from NBC4. Very nice. Coach with here. Yes. So what is it like to, pun intended, take the baton from her? Yes. And now take care of this baby that she's built into this? Well, you know, I tell, you know, I think initially it's a scary thought because those are huge shoes to fill. Um, but, you know, uh, after a lot of thought, it would be for anyone in the country. You know, I, I'm, I'm very confident that anybody that walked in uh, would have to, to fill those shoes. And so, you know, I like to say I know the designer, at least. So, you know, from that perspective, um, being able to really come in when uh, Coach Dennis first took over the program. When I was here as a student athlete, it was a combined program under one head coach. Uh, when I left and went to Auburn, it actually split. So she was just the women's head coach. And, and that's when she brought me back um, just in, in coaching the women's capacity. So really got to get a feel for the one gender, watch how she you know, built culture, recruiting, just the, the things that she does well. Uh, you know, I got to watch from the, I don't want to say the small scale, but from one gender and then um, had the opportunity to combine the program and, and watch her do the same with the men. And so, you know, just to be able to watch it and be a part of it, you know, I really do feel poised to, to take the baton and, and continue that, that legacy. Rosalind Dando from 11 Warriors. To see Karen have the success she did as coaching both of the men and women, how much that inspired you in your own journey to, you know, also be able to take on that responsibility? No, that's a great question. And I think that, you know, we, we talk about, and it's funny, when I first feel like I'm still a young coach. When I first got in the business, you know, that was something that was almost unheard of when you talk about women coaching men. And so to, to really watch her do it, be under her tutelage to, to see how it's been done and been done well, uh, it's almost kind of um, negated the notion that women can't coach men. And more so in doing it has given me confidence to do it. And what I've really noticed is that um, it's probably most important that, that we have women in men's sports. You know, a lot of times uh, as I've taken on coaching with the men uh, as well as the women, they get to see, you know, I've had student athletes ask me, so you mean my mom was working at home and a real job? I said, yes, this is, you know, this is how uh, the, the juggle works. Um, as well as just the care and, and some of the consideration that you know, if women can lead in the in the household and you trust them with with things as maybe a parent or a sister or a loved one, uh, that you can do the same in sport. And so that's really um, kind of given me the confidence to to watch her, not really have to preach it. She just did it. And so you know, being able to to watch her do it. Um, and has given me the confidence to know that it's not really something I should have to. Um, explain or be prepared for, or you know, uh, I'm coach, and and the men and the women have taken you know taken that in strides and uh, been able to to buy in and do some really great things together. Rosalind, being an alum, how much do you think that helps you coming in to have been in the athlete's shoes mm -hmm. and to know what they're going through? Well, 100%. I mean, you know, it's without a doubt, even when I was an assistant coach, you know, I would say uh, to the team that I'm the original track athlete on this squad, you know, whatever, uh, whatever year it was, as, you know, some graduated, I'd had the longest tenure in terms of being a, 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 a member of um, Buckeye Track and Field. And so I think, you know, that's where, um, you know, that affinity for really seeing the growth and, 
you know, the passion and wanting the, the team to do well is something that, um, you know, it, it makes me proud when I can um, look at, I, I uh, text a young lady that broke my triple jump record and says, it's about time, you know, it's about time, that's what you want. Uh, yeah, I think there's this, maybe 15 years sounds like a great time to hold a record, anything after that, it's like, gosh, it makes me feel old. So, you know, I don't want them to keep saying that. Um, so I think that's where, you know, just things like that where I can really feel connected to a program. Uh, I was always going to watch it as a fan because I came through here and it's given me so much. So now just to be back and be able to be a part of uh, continuing the tradition and molding more, more Buckeye student athletes is, I mean, it's incredible. No, um, you know, that's a tre tremendous uh, experience. You know, I will say I, I had conversations. It was, it was tough to leave, you know, as an assistant. And uh, a lot of the conversations, even with, with Mr. Gene Smith, was you, you have to get some leadership experience. You have to, uh, to get some head coach experience. And so, you know, I, I never knew that this would come full circle, but I took that as an indication that that's something that I really needed to, to garner to be able to come back here. And so, you know, that for me is something that, um, you know, all the things that I've done, you know, I hope we're leading to this moment. So I hope that, you know, for alum, for, for future prospective uh, student athletes, for current student athletes, understand that I've, I've really built sort of my career in trying to be here. No, I, I mean, you know, the, the <laughs> athletics is changing just uh, across the board. You start talking about all the the intangibles, name, image, likeness, facilities, race, um, uh, races to who can build the best and the biggest, the fastest, um, and then even just, you know, who, who you're hiring, the big names. And I think, you know, for me, I, I don't know if I'm considered a big name, but I think that it's pretty apparent, and, and from the texts and the emails that I've gotten, that, um, that I'm a connected name to, to this university. And so for that, you know, I think there is sort of a, not sort of, there is, you know, a responsibility to, to make sure that um, when we go out as, as Buckeyes that they make me look good too, right? There's a connection there in terms of uh, what's been built here. And so when we go to, to nationals, I want to make sure that uh, coaches understand that um, this, this is my second home and I, I want to represent it well. Student athletes understand that when we go somewhere, I want to, I want to look good, you know? And so uh, it really because this university has given me so much and I want to be able to pay that forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a great question, um, you know, and, and I've had many great mentors. I've been able to be under Karen, and that's been, been awesome, but, you know, I really do try and pull from some of the greats in the sport um, across the board, different conferences, uh, genders, races, because, you know, what I really want to do is make sure we're building uh, well-rounded student athletes. And so, you know, when I do talk about my time here, being able to be the director, it is special because that was my career goal, um, but, but that's not everyone's career goal here. And so I want to make sure that I'm bringing, uh, you know, what is needed for the student athlete to be able to walk out of here and feel like they're on the, traje the trajectory for their career path. And so those are the things that I think uh, being here, having been here, um, you know, being an alum, I, I hope adds a little special touch in terms of the experience that I'd like to provide for the student athletes. Are you planning to keep the staff mostly intact as is? Do you have plans to bring other staff mm -hmm. with you? What kind of your plan on that? That's um, a great question. And so I'm, I'm in day, not even full day one. And, you know, those are some things that we're doing here in the next couple hours is just evaluations on what the structure will look like.
no, it, it's amazing. I'm watching them cut grass, and I would always hope they wouldn't do it around 2.30 because my allergies would act up right before practice. I mean, it, it really is nostalgic to, to look right onto a sand pit um, that I spent a lot of hours um, just honing a craft and, and a lot of time. So, I mean, this, this feeling is amazing. It's amazing. And then it, it's clearly important for us in the sport of track and field that has so many different elements, mm -hmm. you know, distance runners, field mm -hmm. events, <laughs> it was important for us, I think, to bring in somebody who had the experience that, that you had. <laughs> Is there a moment that you are uh, an incident in, in good ways, but is there is there something that you know now that you didn't know four years ago before you left here and that you're glad that, hey, by being a head coach, I was able to handle this. Oh, yes. I, I, you know, I'd say it's different watching the seat than being in it. Um, and the seat is hot. It is a hot seat. So I think I've definitely called Karen more times when I was at Southern and said, um, you know, one, they don't pay you enough. I don't know what they pay you, but it's not enough. You know, and two, I don't know how you do it because, you know, there are definitely things that, you know, I think it's easy to look at times and events and marks and think that's what coaching is, but it's so much more behind the scenes. And so, you know, that's the part that, um, you know, it takes a while to, to almost step away from the track and realize that a lot of the important work is done, you know, elsewhere and, and really feeling like you're, you're ready to do that, uh, you have the, the knowledge to do that, and then the desire to do that. I think sometimes you, you want to, you'll do it because you want to get back on the track, but I just know now that it's an important piece of the overall uh, student athlete experience. Um, on top of that, I definitely have taken on some, some more duties this past, um, this past, I'd say, semester where I was uh, in coaching and so had um, some different event groups. And I've always considered myself a multi-coach. You know, I, I, the multi-student athletes, I say when someone asks what event you do, you're supposed to say everything. I do everything. And so from a multi-coach, I tell myself I should be able to do everything. Um, you know, I know I may not be uh, a master at all of them, but you know, I've really made sure that I'm comfortable at the throws, I'm comfortable distance, I'm comfortable, you know, jumps, sprints, hurdles so that when student athletes see me there, um, one, they're not shocked and, and afraid of what are you doing here. I'm here to support and watch and help where I can. But also it helps to make sure that there are so many different yeah, you know, event groups and it's easy to kind of be split and siloed out. Um, that's my job to make sure that we all are on the same page and, and we're all, you know, on the same mission. So I enjoy that. Um, I spent the last NCAA championship out uh, there with a end up coaching the steeplechase and I got a steeplechaser to national so I know there are a lot of <laughs> coaches looking at me like what are you doing here with a steeplechaser I, I, I do what needs to be done you know to for for that student athlete to get and accomplish their goals and so that's something that uh, I, I try to continuously do is make sure that I'm creating an environment where we can be well-rounded and then I know what's going on for each of the student athletes. Chase Brown of Buckeye Sports Bulletin. What did the conversation look like for bringing you back? Mm -hmm. Who did you talk to? Was it with Karen, with Gene, with other athletic staff people? Mm -hmm. and, and what was it that made you want to come back? No, it's definitely um, always been a conversation with Karen, just in terms of what we, what she was building. Um, my conversation was never, you know, I always, even when I was here, I told her, this is your seat and I'm not eyeing it and I don't want it and let's face it, you can have that seat as long as you choose because you're good at it. And so the conversations that we would have were, were pretty general about what it looks like to be in her seat, what does it look like to be a director of a program like this. And I think through time and asking those questions and cultivating some of the, the relationships that she had, um, that, that would lead me to asking questions to, to Gene Smith on, uh, TJ Shelton was here at the time, is what, what do you all look for? Uh, when you're when you're hiring head coaches, what makes someone, uh, you know, uh, gives them an opportunity to be here, uh, and really just asking career development questions. Uh, and I didn't know at the time that in asking and them giving me answers, they were telling me what I needed to do. Um, but I think that's part of it is just uh, asking general questions about preparation. And in doing so, um, you know, eventually I got a call in the back end that said, you know, you did all the things we asked you to do. Are you ready to come home? Um, and you know, I, I 
I'm always hesitant because that's a tough act to follow. But, you know, in talking with Karen, we are close to where she, she's very adamant that she was ready. She's not being pushed out. She's not. She's ready. It's time. Um, and she couldn't go out any higher. I mean, she's on top. And, and so really just ready for new energy and, and, and excitement around the program to come in. That, that was her desire. So I think there was obviously some conversations between her and, and Jean Smith that, that led to a phone call to me. Um, and it's hard for two what I consider giants in the business to, to say you're ready for me to dispute that. So, um, you know, for them to give me a call and say this is what we're thinking, um, yes sir, yes ma'am. You know, that's pretty much how that went. Ohio State has done a lot to upgrade its facilities in the last few years. We were standing in mm -hmm. one of them in this lobby with Schumacher. Mm -hmm. What do you think of the facilities here and, and how does it give Ohio State an advantage against its non-conference opponents mm -hmm. and its conference opponents? In the no, I think facilities is always a conversation. You know, again, when my first year here as a student athlete was when they just opened uh, the Jesse Owens Stadium. So it's been nice to have an outdoor facility. You know, I think there, there is a rat's race when it comes to indoor facilities. So we'll, uh, Jamie and I will talk about that later um, because, you know, it is hard to, to watch uh, some conference schools build and, and, and kind of, uh, I feel like they're beating us. I don't like that very much. But at the same time, you know, I think when you talk about just the overall facilities, um, of the university, not just athletics, you know, the, the, the investment that is made to the overall student uh, athlete experience. When I left uh, and, t and went to Auburn and came back, there was a whole new rec center, there was a whole new library. I mean, you know, there's definitely an investment in, in the student experience. And so that's been special to watch. You know, it's, it's hard to, well, I guess it's easy for coaches to complain about their facility and the things they want. But when I look at what's been done across the campus, it's, it's obvious that there's investment in the, the overall student experience, and that's something that I'm, I'm proud of. Speaking of the student athlete experience, when you were a student athlete, mm -hmm. one of the biggest differences now is the makeup of your life. Mm -hmm. I'm curious how your experience with NIL maybe got stuck on something over the way. How did that go? How do you kind of plan on maybe navigating that at a place like Ohio State where they would be as block up? Um, I'm, I'm convinced that may be a reason Karen got out of the business. I'll tell you what, that at this point, you know, name, image, likeness, we, we've, I've called every, um, you know, division, every different level, every, I mean, and when we're asking what are people doing, there's a lot of I don't know. Everyone's trying to keep up and also not uh, get too far ahead of some things. And so, you know, it's, it's an exciting time to be able to do some things for student athletes. Uh, obviously, the, the brand of Ohio State is, is one that's recognizable, and so I'm excited to be able to partner that with the student athletes and their experience here. But I think the how-to is something that is, is still to be determined.